Item number SCP-5036, Object Class, Safe, Initially Presumed Neutralized. Special Containment Procedures. Each of the eight pieces of SCP-5036 is to be kept in a separate container, each at a minimum distance of six meters from the others. If during a breach of containment the pieces are brought together, they must be separated during the week following the new event. During this time, the anomaly is inactive, and it is safe to handle its parts. Description SCP-5036 is a companion archetypal attractor token, taking the form of a silver bell de coin minted in the late 17th century in the vice royalty of New Spain. The token has been magically cut into eight segments of roughly equal size which segments are designated SCP-5036-1-8. through 8. No anomalous effects result from assemblages of fewer than five of the segments. If five or more of the segments are brought within a volume of space corresponding to a sphere with a radius of 15 meters, an archetypal negative event, new, will commence. Affecting individuals who are then in or who subsequently enter into the area of effect. The intensity of the event increases as more of the segments are introduced into the area. Most individuals affected by the new event experience a psychological compulsion to adopt certain behavior and mannerisms, such as assumption of an accent and speech patterns, severing those prevailing in Boston, England, and West Country in the early 18th century. Unusually intense interest in maritime manners, including the use of nautical terminology to describe non-nautical objects, excessive consumption of alcohol, fixation on the acquisition of shiny metallic or crystalline objects, even if those objects of nominal value, such as costume jewelry, bits of foil glitter or sequins, or loose change, and Van Loy and Bravado. Note, it should be noted that a new event does not imbue affected individuals with any particular skills such as seamanship, navigation, or personal combat. For example, an affected individual's experience a narrative episode featuring combat, they tend to engage in stage fighting or simulated gunplay with pointed index fingers accompanied by all sound effects. Some affected individuals may also seek to change their physical appearance or apparel, such as by removing their footwear, covering a healthy eye with a patch, vanishing baton-shaped objects, and simulating prosthesis for missing limbs or extremities. Other affected individuals, while not exhibiting the same behavior described above, may also adopt altered behavior, so as to adopt the personas of supporting characters in the narrative. Addendum 1. MTF After Action Report 5036-C1 SCP Involved SCP-5036 MTF Involved MTF Tau-10 Date, September 19th, 1995 Location, Chicago, Illinois, USA Background Command received a report of erratic and presumably anomalous behavior aboard Chicago Transit Authority public bus. MTF Tower 10 is dispatched to area and ordered to observe and await further instructions. At 8.22, MTF Tower 10 arrives on scene, disguised as road crew and firefighters. CTA bus with driver and passengers aboard is observed parked in bus lane of public road. Driver and passengers are provisionally designated CV 1 through 47. While maintaining minimum 50 meter distance from bus per command instructions, MTF commences the erection of road close signs and barriers to limit further civilian exposure to possible threat. Sun glare on windows of bus inhibit observation into interior cabin of bus. Bus motor is running, but passenger door is closed. At 8.28, MTF members bring specialty optics and long-range surveillance microphones online, 
Command instructs MTF to continue to maintain distance from bus. A notated transcript of sound recording from interior of bus. Dangerous shall cease be, no more than two fathoms. On the ground, Abby, surely we will perish. The Royal Navy gives no quarter to scallywags such as we. Avast your swabs, out sweeps the starboard. Well, push our way free of these shrouds. Various passengers hold umbrellas, canes, and in one case a baguette from a grocery bag up to the windows on the right side of the bus and mime a pushing or rolling motion. Heave! Heave, you scurvy dogs! Captain, sail! Three points of starboard! Flanish colors! Last cheering! Truce to the larboard guns! We'll take that Spaniard a prize! Or the devil have me! Broadside at the ready! Fire as she bears! Various passengers hold umbrellas, canes, the baguette, a bouquet of flowers, and various other objects out of the windows on the left side of the bus, mimed discharge of naval guns and shout bang! Command instructs MTF members to retreat 20 further meters from bus and assume prone position. Ha! A green sweep of the decks where they strike their colors. Close for boarding a sweet fat prize, lads, or the riches of the Indies and the pearls of Araby. At this point, to avoid the risk of self-injury on the part of the affected individuals or other civilians, MTF deploys anesthetic gas grenades, successfully disabling all individuals aboard bus. In adherence to command instructions, while continuing to maintain distance from bus, MTF deploys miniaturized flying drones to enter bus through open windows for closer inspection. Four components of SCP-5036, subsequently designated SCP-5036-1-4, through are observed scattered on floor of bus, identified as potentially anomalous, and retreat by drones for containment and further study. Civilians on bus are retreated without further incident. The four components of SCP-5036 that have been retrieved by drones after preliminary analysis, were initially determined to be non-anomalous, and SCP-5036 was then designated neutralized. Subsequently, when cataloging these components for disposal, junior researcher McBeddy inferred from their morphology that additional as yet undiscovered components might still be in a bus or on the person of individual who had been on the bus. After this suggestion was forwarded to command, a second sweep was performed and recovered the remaining four SCP-5036 components from CV-3's coin purse. Together with a crumbled note, see Exhibit 5036C1A. Analysis resumed. Further upon, SCP-5036 was redesignated as safe. The civilians who had been aboard the bus received medical clearance and were then amnesticized and released. Addendum 2, Exhibit 5036-CIA, note found in coin purse of CV-3 during incident 5036-C1. Ahoy, Skipper! Sometimes the true treasures we seek be the new shipmates that we meet along the way, says I. Are oh, we cool yet? Addendum 3, Citation of Distinguished Surface Medal presented to Dr. Wilbur McBeddy. The Director of Site 146, on behalf of the Foundation, takes pleasure in presenting the Distinguished Surface Medal to Dr. Wilbur McBeddy, Deputy Project Leader of New Archetypal Attractive Project, for conspicuous ingenuity and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. On June 28, 2003, a security breach occurred at Site-146. The incident involved infiltration of the site by operatives of the rival GOI, which evolved into combat between the infiltrators and the Foundation security forces. Due to the chaos, several hostile saving entities also escaped Foundation containment and roamed freely within the facility, resulting in additional casualties. 
and advised that the loss of the western and southern wings of Site-146 were imminent, Dr. McBetty declined to retreat to Security Bunker 146E with other personnel, and instead contacted Colonel Choi Tokwon of the Foundation Security Force to propose a lawful defensive strategy and to volunteer to implement it. Following Colonel Choi's approval of the plan, Dr. McBetty gallantly and single-handedly retreated four segments of SCP-5036 from their respective separate reciprocals, suffering a gunshot wound to the foot and a mauling by an escaped containment specimen that resulted in the loss of his left arm. Following this, ignoring his own serious injuries, Dr. McBetty intentionally attracted the attention of several enemy operatives and uncontained SCP entities so that they would pursue him, then unhastily led to hostiles to his own laboratory, where additional segments of SCP-5036 were temporarily stored. Once Dr. McBeddy and 70 hostiles had entered the laboratory, and Colonel Choi could observe by means of the security system that they had ceased belligerence, Note, Colonel Troy reported that Dr. McBede, the enemy infiltrators, and the uncontained SCP entities had commenced singing sea shanties while engaging in a rum drinking contest. The security team was able to disarm and incapacitate the infiltrators and recontain the SCP entities. Dr. McBede's quick thinking and bold initiative reflect great credit upon himself, the new archetypal attractive project team, and the Foundation. Addendum 4. Archetypal Attractive Project. Status Memorandum dated April 8, 2009. Excerpt. 2. Dr. Vladimir Hall, Administrator, Division of Applied Pathophysiology. From Dr. Robert McBede, New Project Head. Status of Reverse Engineering Initiative. I wish to report the highlights of the project team's results from the last quarter. In accordance with your directive last year, our team has been examining SCP-5036 with a view toward reverse engineering to combellion archetypal attractive functionality embodied in the object. The results of this initiative has been fruitful. While we do not have yet a comprehensive model for designing and producing attractive tokens for any arbitrarily selected combellion archetype, we appear to have succeeded in reproducing and copying a token that duplicates SCP-5036's archetypal attraction effects. We are proceeding with a trial and error program of testing the token design and manufacture process with alternative configurations. This program has indicated a number of promising needs, including the potential development of archetypal attractors for the sidekick, Grand Doraga, Artful Dodger, Chooser of the Chosen One, and Temptress Archetypal Roles. Well, none of these archetypal roles are particularly interesting in themselves. I believe that the progress to date supports the view that the allocation of resources to additional exploration in this direction is merited. The utility of developing suitable archetypal attractive capabilities to fill certain modes needed in the course of the Foundation's operations should be obvious, especially in cases where specialized training is uneconomical, or where it is difficult to staff particular positions on a voluntary basis. Respectfully, Dr. McBabe Day.